ora and welcome to Auckland First 15 School Report. I'm Kimberly Downs. Today, we're at King's College for one of the most highly anticipated clashes of the Auckland 1A Championship. This is a match many have had marked in their calendars for months, where we get to enjoy one of the oldest, fiercest and longest running rivalries in New Zealand schoolboy rugby. I'm talking of course about Kings up against Auckland Grammar. More than 200 matches have been played between these two schools and today it's one of five great matches we've got for you here on School Report. Yes, round six of the Auckland 1A Championship features one of schoolboy rugby's greatest rivalries as Kings College look for revenge after losing twice to Auckland Grammar last year. The league leaders Mount Albert travel to Onehonga. St Peter's aim to keep their winning run alive against Aoreri. Dilworth hosts champs St Kennegan and Kelston welcome Otahuhu. But to begin, second plays fourth as Sacred Heart host De La Salle College. A highly anticipated matchup pitted Sacred Heart College against De La Salle College in round six of the Auckland 1A Championship. The home side with an unbeaten record thanks to a couple of dramatic last gasp wins took on De La Salle who'd won four straight games and conceded just three tries the entire 1A season. This game would be a true measure of both sides' title credentials. The two Catholic colleges slugged it out in a scoreless first 15 minutes, with De La Salle's ferocious defence continuing to make a big impression on their 1A opposition. The deadlock was broken midway through the first half as prop Damon Abraham showed a great outside break, left foot step and big fend to score a cracking try by the sticks to give Sacred Heart the early lead. Ten minutes later, a rock solid De La Cell scrum allowed rampaging centre Lalo Milo Lalo Milo to cut back on a great line and find captain Caleb Fa'alili running the perfect flanker's angle to dot down for a converted try. Soon after, as De La Salle looked to exit their 22, a small lapse allowed Sacred Heart halfback Ben Engels to score a gift wrap try to put the home side ahead 14-7. With half time approaching, Sacred Heart were again in De La Salle's red zone where hooker Joseph Casey set good ball for the home side to continue their attack. George Weetana took on the line and rolled out a great inside ball for the fast finishing Alimaki Namoa to have the home side ahead 19-7 at the break. De La Salle needed to turn around a 12 point deficit and just three minutes into the second half a promising blindside move was diffused by Jack McHugh as the captain scampered 40 metres upfield to secure Sacred Heart a valuable bonus point try. Having worn down the De La Salle pack, Sacred Heart unleashed the line-out drive of the season thanks to a tricky change of direction that allowed Abraham to collect a rear front rower's double. With 10 minutes to go before full time, Sacred Heart sealed the six tries to one victory as Captain McHugh intercepted another De La Salle backline move to race in under the sticks. Sacred Heart with a comprehensive 38-7 win, now six wins from six and stamping their mark on the 2016 season. Yeah, we knew we had to uh, work the De La Salle boys for that first 35. We know they're nice and physical, so try to tie them out a little bit and then run free in the second half. Yeah, a really physical, um, as expected from Secret Heart. They always bring the physicality and um, yeah, just, we just didn't match up today. If you think it's going to be an easy match, we just have to turn up. There's no chance, especially with the La Salle uh, pride that they have and the Catholic tradition as well. Awesome game there between Sacred Heart and De La Salle. Sacred Heart really firming as one of the favourites for the 1A title. Now we head to the cage, home to another high flyer, St Peter's College. They take on Aorere, who do harbour hopes of making the playoffs this season. So this is the kind of clash they need to win. Week 6 of the Auckland 1A Championship saw Aorere College travel to St Peter's College. The home side are one of the form teams of the season with four wins from five. Aoreri have picked up two wins so far in 2016. And with both teams happy to grind out results, this promised to be a 70 minute arm wrestle at the cage. And first on the board were the visitors as JP Natoko gave Aoreri an early three point buffer. St Peter's replied two minutes later as Harry Plummer playing his blazer game nailed a long range penalty of his own. 
Aurere College edged ahead as Natoku slotted another penalty to have the visitors leading six points to three. In a match with few chances, Plummer sold a great dummy and accelerated towards the line. The classy playmaker was pulled down just a few metres out. The ball was slung right, where popular number eight Luteru Tolai tried to force his way over. Close contact rugby was the order of the day as St Peter's well-drilled forwards inch closer to the try line. And it was ultimately blindside Callum McNabb who burrowed over for the first try of the afternoon. Just minutes from half time, clean first phase possession allowed Plummer to fire a long pass to centre AJ Lamb, who in turn floated a great ball out to an unmarked Sio Ali Fangupo, who put St Peter's ahead 13 to 6 at the break. In the second half, Aoriri needed to turn around a seven point deficit and had the bulk of possession as they put ample pressure on St Peter's. An 80 metre breakout by fullback Morsesi Pepper almost locked the scores up but the blue and golds managed to defuse all Aurevi attacks. Harry Plummer added another penalty to increase St Peter's lead and they were able to defend that 10 point buffer for the final 20 minutes to clinch their fifth win of the season. Oh, the team's really excited to be on our, on our winning run of four games. Um, we've had real tough opposition so far and I think AO today they really gave it everything. The pride they have is amazing and they're real strong boys so we're real pleased to get that one especially today. Yeah, we, we know we can match any team's um, physical game in this competition, but coming today we just wanted to, we wanted to work on their mental side of our game. That's what we've been lacking on for the, on our previous games, and yeah, I think we achieved some good record here that we can take into next week. Oh, we were made to work pretty hard today. Um, our area, the, they're a physical team, Nigley, and to be fair, we're going to need to be a whole lot better next week if we um, think we're going to compete with Sacred Heart. The Saints go marching on. Now, when we return on School Report, our feature match from here at King's College. Thousands out in force today. The King supporters certainly in fine voice, as are the Grammar fans behind me. You can really feel the excitement building as the hosts prepare to take on their historic rivals. The passion, the heart, the pressure. It's all about to reach fever pitch. I'm proud to captain the King's College first 15, uh, mainly because the, the culture at the school, uh, the culture in the team, um, the boys I'm playing with, you know, it, it, it makes it an enjoyable experience um, throughout the whole year. I suppose King's game in the back of everyone's heads is the Auckland Grammar game. Uh, we've got a home this year, you know, it's a big game to front up on, uh, there's a lot of pressure outside and, and, and on the field, but I know the boys this year, you know, they're hungry for the win but you know we have to take each game at a time and just be in a good position on the table before we go and play the game. The atmosphere of the game, you know, when you run out, there's a crowd there and, and you know there's people all watching at home on TV. Uh, you gotta try not to let that get to you, but I notice that you feel a lot more uh, confident when you run out there that, that you know you can do well and uh, that you have to do well and, and, and play for your school. A goal for this year just to have fun and remember the year and we know if we, we, we have fun points will come and games will go our way and so the main message here is just to have fun and, and remember the year. The, the old boys um, that we look up to, I know Mitch Karpik, I uh, played seven, it's a great inspiration to me. I've seen him around and I uh, always try to get some tips off him. Ian Kirkpatrick, you know we got a trophy we play that he represents. Uh, Ali Williams is another one, uh, you know he's great all black. It is a helpful factor to play and to learn to have the old boys influencing our team. Uh, the 1A uh, competition is, is special for Kings to be in because it, um, mainly you know you meet people and you, and you develop skills on and off the field. Uh, you play high tempo rugby, it's very enjoyable, but it, it develops your character. You know, sets you up for for other things in life. No, it, it's a it's a great experience to play. In. Welcome back to School Reporters. Joe Johnston leads his team down the guard of honour. King's College taking on Auckland Grammar. Schoolboy rugby doesn't get any bigger than this. Yes, Auckland Grammar take on their arch rivals, having beaten King's College with a last minute try in the corresponding fixture last season and won again when they met in the semi finals. King's College aiming to beat Auckland Grammar on home soil for the first time since 2010. 
with a test match atmosphere, it was the home side who struck first as first five Sharan Maktoi booted Kings to an early three-point lead. There was little else to separate the two schools for the next 30 minutes, with both sides grinding out every metre. But prop Kanan Satani Tua bust the match open as he spun through the defence to score a well-taken try. Thomas Strawn added the extras to have a fired-up Auckland Grammar in front by four points. Both schools showed plenty of endeavour, with King centre Edward Vial Mulitalo bending the line on a number of occasions, but always meeting Auckland Grammar resistance. The visitors heading to the break with a surprise 7-3 lead. So it's halftime here at Kings and it's Auckland Grammar who have done the early damage. They're looking a different side to the last couple of weeks and they lead the hosts 7-3 at the break to give the Lion Pride plenty to roar about. Go, go! Sharan Matoi added a penalty to begin the second half to get Kings College within one point as the home side started to string faces together and build momentum. The forwards edged closer to the Auckland Grammar line where cult hero Takaji Young Yen took charge and barged over. The big props converted try putting Kings College back in front. Led by inspirational back rower AJ Moore, Territory began to mount for King's College. James Stanners quickly spun the ball left and Matoi slipped a fantastic pass in the tackle for Liam Baker-Smith to score. Matoi converted from the sideline to give King's College a handy 13-point lead with 15 minutes remaining. With full time approaching an Auckland Grammar hunting a losing bonus point, AJ Moore scooped up loose ball and the unstoppable number eight raced 50 metres upfield to put the icing on the cake for Kings College. Their fourth win of the season, but importantly for now, a long awaited win against arch rivals Auckland Grammar. It's been a long time, a long time since you guys have won here at home against Grammar. What does this mean to you guys? Oh, it means so much, you know. Uh, the students love it, the, the players themselves love it. It means so much to the wider community. Uh, it's, it's a great feeling, it's, it's, it means a lot. The school has backed us all the way in previous years, and to give them this win, it just means so much. That try that you scored is something surely you will remember. What was going through your head? I don't know. White line fever, that's all. And now with a big crowd like that, it's just backing me up, you know. Could never go wrong. The 1A table doesn't really come into it. You set the whole competition aside and you focus on on the, the rivalry, uh, the tradition and the history, which is obviously spoken about a lot through the week. And it was a true grammar game. It was tough. Uh, we had to work hard and, and eventually um, just all that hard work we did uh, came out in the end. What a win by Kings here today and you can see the emotion, you can see how much this one really means to them. Alright, let's check in with Mount Albert Grammar now, the competition leaders. They're taking on Onihunga, whose defence is about to be severely tested. Mount Albert Grammar made the journey to Onihunga High School. The home side's defence did the school proud last week against St Kentigan, but was sure to be put to the test against a mag side that have snared bonus points from their first five wins. Mount Albert opened the scoring in the third minute when Salen Tonu, who scored a try reminiscent of his father Ofisa, with good movement off the back of the scrum. Tonu sparked another attacking play, with centre Caleb Clark also showing he's a chip off the block. The son of All Black Aroni with a strong midfield carry and flanker Thomas Barlow following up to grab another converted try. As they have on two other occasions this season, Onihunga got themselves on the board with fullback Kawa Vunipola knocking over a well struck penalty. Mags hit straight back when number eight John Latu made the most of a dominant scrum to push the visitors out to a 21 3 lead. More set piece dominance and wing Harley Maynard surged down the blind. He linked with Tonu'u and the halfback found Paul Roach backing up on a good line to bring up Mount Albert's sixth bonus points of the season. Flanker Isaiah Papali'i and fullback Niven Longapoa rattled off two quick tries and Salen Tonu'u brought the half to a close with a smartly taken try against the posts. Mount Albert leading at the break by 47 points to three. 
Shortly after the restart, the league leaders ticked over 50 points when first five Paul Roach ghosted through the defence and dotted down under the posts for his second try. Man Albert's forwards laid on more quality first phase ball and Roach made use of the extra space in the back line to collect a hat-trick of tries. The visiting forwards then got stuck into their work, with Barlow picking up another try and then prop Michael Palmer involved with a number of carries, eventually muscling over for a try of his own. Mount Albert rounded out their scoring when Captain Waimana Riedlinger Kapa got himself on the score sheet. Mags doing what they've done to five other teams this season and collecting the full five points as their perfect season continues. Uh, today I thought the boys really clicked today, um, scored a few a few early tries and that's what we really wanted to get, a good um, kick off from the start. Key to success would probably just be um, teamwork, you know, no one wants to be the individual player in the team and we really um, work together. I think the boys are a bit intimidated, we're um, coming into this game knowing that we're playing mag, they're top of the table, but um, I thought the last 10 minutes were full of just heart and dedication, so I thought it was a good game. That Mount Albert machine is looking unstoppable this year. However, it is still St Kent's who have their name on the 1A trophy. Next on School Report, the defending champs take on Dilworth School as they continue their quest to go back to back. Round six of the Auckland 1A Championship saw Dilworth School welcome St Kentigan College. The home side have picked up just one victory this season and were hoping to trip up St Kent's on their first ever visit to Dilworth. The defending champions, meanwhile, looking for their fourth win of the year. In just their second season in the 1A grade, Dilworth have never been overawed regardless of the calibre of their opponents. And with St Kent's looking to attack early, the home side tackle courageously to keep the defending champs out. St Kent again continue to push for points as they aim to give their season some much needed momentum. The forwards making metres as they work through the phases before halfback Carlos Price spied a gap that was quickly shut down. But on hand, prop JP Papani muscled over to open the scoring. The Blue and Whites added a penalty before athletic number eight Caleb Milne got within centimetres of the Dilworth try line. The ball was recycled and fellow loose forward Sila Tuititi crashed over to have St Kentigan ahead 15-0 at the break. The second half began with Dilworth getting on the board through a penalty from Tavita Hala. But any chance of a comeback was ended when just two minutes later, St Kent's front rowers took aim at the defensive line. Loosehead prop Cameron Millington burrowing over for a converted try. Standout for St Kent's this season is Itane Nanai, and the fullback defused a tricky bomb and spotted all the space he needed down the right side. Nanai outpacing the Dilworth defence to nab a much-needed bonus point try as St Kentigan got their season back on track with two consecutive wins. Um, good that we got these two wins. Um, we knew that we couldn't take these guys lightly because, you know, we um, first time playing here, hostile environment and, yeah, just um, tough, tough game, but yeah, I'm happy that we got the win. Um, I think the boys showed a lot of heart today. I think um, every week's a challenge and we know that the teams we play are tough, physical teams and um, I think every week the boys um, step up and it's all you can ask. You know, the score lines are, are what they are, but you know, it's the performances on the field and how the boys perform is what we, what we look to. We knew that Dilworth were, had a lot of character coming into the game and, and they had a lot of motivation uh, for this game. So we knew we had to front physically and to get the bonus point today was uh, pretty vital for our season and, and where it's standing. Another good win from St Kent's as they go creeping up that points table. Now we head west for our final match of the week. Calston boys managed to snare their first win of the year last week. So can they make it two in a row against Otahu College? A quality Kelston boys high side came into round six in confident mood following their first win of the Auckland 1A campaign last week. Making the trip west were Otahuhu College, who hope to claim their first victory of the season, having shown good spirit earlier in the year. The two sides slugged it out for ten minutes before Kelston unleashed their back line. Winger Goldberg Polotokopa sucking in several defenders and unleashing fullback Sebastian Vicenia to get the first five-pointer of the afternoon. 
Clean line-out ball allowed Calston first five Max Toya Law to attack the line. The playmaker threw a great flat ball for Tuna Tauta Lafua to go storming into the opposition half. And the long striding Vicinia was in support once again to complete a fantastic 60 metre try. Kelston then won a line out on the opposition throw to find themselves hot on attack. Number eight, AJ Sanganga threw out a fend and then a skip pass that put Abel Mangalogal in the corner and Kelston ahead 17 0. As half-time approached, second five, Sapaya Fetu bust through the defensive line and skipped out of a couple of tackles before drawing the last defender and sending Palota Kopa away for the bonus point try before half-time. A big turnaround in the second half saw Kelston dominate at scrum time. And with the Otahuhu forwards backpedalling, AJ Sanganga pounced on the loose ball to grab Kelston's fifth yeah. try. The home side went in search of more points with Toyoloa firing out a skip pass that gave Vizania just enough room to dot down for his hat-trick. With the final whistle approaching, Toyoloa stabbed the ball behind the Otahuhu defence where Goldberg Palotakopa raced onto the ball then skipped, stepped, twisted and turned out of several tackles as he made his way towards the posts. In support was Mangalogo, who lobbed a long pass to Danny Silvalio to finish off a brilliant coast-to-coast -coast try. Kelston with their best performance of the year, beating Otahuhu 39-0. I think we just stuck to the basics, eh? um, executed our game plan, and um, you know tried our best to play the, the full 70. Because um, usually we tend to fall off, you know, in that first 20 of the second half. So I think we, we still stuck at it and um, got the W. I think the, the, our fitness was there, finally getting there, but uh, uh, we just need to work more on our uh, basic skills, uh, tackling and catching and passing. Key to victory has been really direct on these guys. They were pretty physical with us. Um, so, although, yeah, when we got direct, we were able to free up space out, elsewhere and um, took advantage of some holes that we were opening up. Mm -hmm. Kelston boys having a good couple of weeks in the 1A Championship. Nice work there, lads. Now, let's check in on the race for those sought-after semi-final spots. After six rounds, Mount Albert's dream run continues. 30 points from a possible 30. Also unbeaten is Sacred Heart, just three points adrift. A trio of teams on 21 points, with St Kent's jumping from sixth to fourth, St Peter's slipping outside the final four, and De La Salle falling two places. Further down the ladder, Kelston leapfrogs Aoredi into eighth position. Six weeks down, just five weeks to go now before the playoffs. And next week we have a rematch of last year's blockbuster final. Round seven of the Auckland 1A Championship sees Auckland Grammar seek revenge against St Kennegan College. The clash of the Catholic colleges has Sacred Heart travelling to St Peter's. Mount Alberts aim to keep their streak alive at Kelston. Kings head to Dilworth in good spirits. De La Salle host Aoredi, and our feature match sees Onihunga and Otahuhu meet in a battle for 1A survival. The 2016 season just gets better and better, so do make sure you join us again next time on School Report for all the best action from those great matches. Also, do head over to Auckland First 15's Facebook page to choose your best try of round six. Some absolute beauties in there this week, and I'll catch you next time on School Report.